Okay, okay. <laughs> Go! Will you hand me my screen box? Now go free. Okay, Mr. Richard, this is not going to work. What was that? This is not going to work. There's too much tough for the facility. Serve 10 days jail. Move, get out the. Mr. Richard said, Mr. Richard said, I am going to say that my patience with you is, is a little bit done. You're not muted, so whatever you're talking, whoever you're talking to is interrupting the record. All right, we are going to go on the record in the matter of <clears throat> Logan Richardson, 23204. And appearance, counsel? Good morning, Your Honor. Sean Head, P72599, appearing on behalf of Logan Richardson, who is present with me to my right. Can you please state your name for the record? Logan Richardson. Yeah. All right, thank you. And I recall that last time on April 9th, Mr. Richardson had some had some issues with his um, connection, so the court ordered him in person. So, counsel, today is a date scheduled for probation violation. Your client's currently on probation for domestic violence. He was sentenced April 6th of 2023, and it's alleged that he failed to provide his drug testing results as ordered, failed to appear for probation appointment, failed to pay, and failed the test as ordered. And so on April 9th, this court entered a plea of not guilty because of your client's connection issues. So your client could appear in person and have a chance to address these matters. And so counsel, what's happening today? Um, my understanding is that all the fines and costs have been paid. There was, I think, $415 that was owed um, that was paid prior to the last hearing, or the payment was submitted prior to the last hearing. So so that should no longer be an issue. Um, there, uh, he'll, he'll be pleading guilty to the other violations, Your Honor, with some explanation. Okay. And you heard the, <clears throat> the allegations, right, sir? Yep. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. And as to those allegations, sir, how do you plead? I uh, plead guilty. And that the recommendation here is for you to continue to complete all terms of probation, extend your probation for six months, continue your under advisement status, pay a $50 probation violation fee, Test in a court approved facility and 10 days jail, planning that jail. Do you understand that? Yes, we have, we, have, we all understand the recommendation only because it's been verbally expressed by the court. There is no written um, um, recommendation that we're able to obtain. My understanding is that whoever prepared it is no longer with the uh, department, the probation department, and Your Honor has the only but paper no, counsel, copy. Counsel, I'm not sure where you're getting that information because that's not accurate. The person that probation told me that this morning. Probation told you that the person that prepared this is no longer with the court? Correct. And they could not get into her email, and you have the only paper copy. That's what they told me this morning. Okay. But I do understand the recommendation okay. from what you verbally okay. let me, expressed. Let me clear, please let me clarify. So perhaps um the person that that prepared it or that emailed it is no longer with the court. But the person that prepared it is with the court. So okay, I, and and I'm here on Zoom, so I have the file here, so you couldn't look at it in person. So I, I don't think it matters, Your Honor. I just wanted to let you know I've not seen any recommendation. I've only heard it from from Your Honor. Okay, I don't think that's a problem. All right, <clears throat> and Counsel, can you please bar to your client? Sure, um, Mr. Richardson, did you miss a? Uh, a meeting with your probation officer on February 14th of 2024. Um, yes, Your Honor. Or yes, sir. All right. And then did you did you miss some testing um, on September 19th, 2023, October 2nd, 2023, and October 17th, 2023? Um, yes, sir. And it, it, is it your understanding that you had permission to be in Los Angeles for video production um, during those time periods? Yep. Um, was, yes? Yep. Yes, was there some confusion regarding how to make up tests and communications between you and your probation officer at that time? Yep. Well, you did, in fact, miss those tests, right? Yes, sir. And you understand you were required a, a, um, through your probation terms to either make those tests as ordered by the court or to make up tests in accordance with your communication with your probation officer, right? 
Yes, yes, sir. But you didn't accomplish that um, properly, did you? No, <clears throat> no, sir. All right, Your Honor. Is the court satisfied? Yes, but I also have one other question, sir. When is the last time you made a payment? Uh, it would have been last week, um, literally right before the court day. I, I brought cash with me today of the amount, just in case there was uh, like fees added on or anything like that. So I, my, my plan was to go speak with Mrs. Shaw after this. Hold on, sir. Your attorney made a statement that you paid all your fines and costs. You have stated that you paid your fines and costs last week. It's not showing. So that's what, I'm, that's what I'm asking you, sir. When did you last make a payment? It would have been last week, so it must have not um, went through. And uh, I brought cash just in case if that happened, because I wasn't sure if it had went through. So you made the payment electronically? Yeah. Were you getting a confirmation that the funds were withdrawn from your account? No. Or you made the payment last week, right? Yes. Okay, what date did you make the payment? It was on the day of the court date. On the ninth. So if it's not if it's not showing yep, on the ninth. <laughs> if it's not showing up, then it must have not pulled out of my account. Um I did just reset up a direct deposit um and got a new job and everything. So there was a little bit of uh stuff going on as far as money being transferred from that um from my PNC account. And uh, so if it's not showing on your end, I did bring cash today to uh All right, we don't show a paper we need to July. And when did you get permission to leave to go to well actually let me the court will it, say that the plea is knowing voluntary and factually accurate. The court will accept your plea, sir. When did you receive permission to leave to go to Los Angeles? Um, it would have been, it, it, it was actually about 12 different states. I went on a tour, so I do video production for work. Okay, when um, did you get that, so that? When did you, let me just clarify that. When did you, when did you send request permission to leave the state? Um, around the time of the missed test when I left. So it would have been September. Who did you send that request to? Uh, Mrs. Natalie Shaw, my probation officer. And then that's who I, every time I leave for work, I, I send it to her and we have pretty good communication as far as uh, uh, traveling for work. It's just a, a little bit hard to take a test when you don't have um the proper paperwork so like uh on, what do you mean just proper... test. hold on what do you mean the proper so, paperwork what do you mean they um so when you go to test at um a clinic they would like uh an employment like uh, a paperwork from employment or from the probation office so I was having to pay like two or three hundred dollars and uh make a whole entire tour bus of 20 people and security um so the tests were actually ending up coming out to be a thousand dollars because i was having to pay for the security because we were on the tour bus hold on well none of that is even making sense or i don't know why you had to pay for security but my question is this uh, if you if you didn't have proper paperwork, did you send in anything to Ms. Shaw asking for paperwork? Yep. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, yes? So, yeah. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. When did you do that? It would have been September and uh, multiple other dates as well. Okay. So did you get what what did you get the paperwork that you had requested? Um I did not, but we found out a uh so like we we were able to figure out how to test out of state. Your, your Honor, if I, if I may, he now has new employment where he's working for Mortgage Pros. He actually got a, a marketing director job, um, making very good money. He's local now. He's not going to be traveling. That's not going to be an issue. We, we did receive, um, we understand the recommendation to extend probation for six months, continue testing during that time period, um, allow him to keep the height of delayed status and pay fines and costs with 10 days jail suspended. 
Um, we believe that that is a fair recommendation under the circumstances, and he's not going to be violating um, in, the, in the manner that he had before because he's not going to be traveling. It's not going to be an issue. Um, he understands he needs to maintain clear and um, communication with his uh, probation officer. And because he's local now, he's not going to have the problems that he had in the past. So we ask the court to adopt the recommendation. Well, counsel, it appears though some of the problems, I mean, I'm very confused on some of the problems. I'm not sure how that, how the problems or what have you would have your client not contacting in since November. I don't know either, Your Honor. And I also don't understand why, why he wasn't violated in October, November, December, January, February, or March. Um, not until he was about off probation did this become, um, you know, did he receive notice of a violation? So I, I know that we could have corrected it earlier. We could have, whatever happened in the past, I know that we have a plan to move forward and we're, we're, we believe that that's a fair plan and we'd ask the court to adopt it. Okay, well, let me clarify. As to January, February, March, and why it just came through or it's just coming through now is that Ms. Shaw was out unexpectedly uh, for, she was out for an unexpectedly um extended duration so um <clears throat> so that's i think why that happened it doesn't explain why it wasn't done in october november december um but i can tell you as it relates to the january february march um as to why it wasn't brought in any of those months but in any event the court's going to adopt the recommendation the court's going to order probation to be continued extended for six months Continue under advisement status, $50 probation violation fee. You must touch in a court approved facility. So before you leave, you have to stop in to speak to Ms. Shaw. And the court's going to order 10 days jail. We're going to suspend that jail with a jail review July 22nd. I'm sorry, what was July 22nd, Your Honor? The jail review, counsel. Jail review? Yes, I just ordered 10 days jail, but we're going to suspend that. So then I set it for a jail review just to confirm that everything is going well. And then Understood. we'll review that and at that point. All right, the court's going to also order the $50 probation violation fee as well. And um, <clears throat> anything else, counsel? No, Your Honor. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. All right, please stop in and see Ms. Paul, Mr. Richardson. Thank you. Let's go off the record. We're on the record, the matter of Thomas Gregory, 201530. Attorney Corey Westmoreland, Kring, on behalf of Mr. Gregory. Mr. Gregory, would you please state your full name for the record? Thomas William Gregory. All right. And so today is the date scheduled for probation violation. Your client is on probation for malicious destruction of property. He was sentenced in December of 2020, failed to appear for probation violation September of 2021. Bench warrant was issued. And then at some point he contacted the court, posted a bond. And then in February of 2024, and so then now today's the date scheduled for this probation violation. It's alleged he failed to appear for probation August 24th of 21, failed to attend workforce, failed to attend anger management. And so, counsel? Yes, Your Honor. After speaking with uh, Mr. Gregory, uh, we are prepared to enter a guilty plea uh, in part <clears throat> um, in way of any sort of uh, contested hearing. All right, sir, please raise your right hand. You sound me swear from the testimony about to give this man to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. All truth, nothing but the truth. As so those allegations, sir, how do you plead? Guilty. And in this matter, the recommendation is for prob uh, probation to be revoked. The case closed without improvement. Under advisement, status to be revoked. $50 probation violation being 30 days jail. Do you understand that? Yes. All right. And knowing all that, do you still want to continue with your plea? Yes. All right, and counsel, if you can please be your mic. Sure. Mr. Gregory, is it true that you were placed on probation out of the Wyandotte District Court? Yes. As a term and condition of your probation, were you to complete uh, workforce hours and anger management? Yes. Did you fail to do so? Yes. Did you also uh, fail to attend uh, probation? You absconded from probation? Yes. And you understand that those are all violations of the terms and conditions of your probation? Yes. <clears throat> I'm satisfied, Judge. The court is also satisfied to see if knowing voluntary and factually accurate. The court will accept your plea to the probation violations, indicate technical violations one, two, and three. And counsel as to 
the recommendation. Yes, Your Honor, I, I would just simply uh, ask to give Mr. Gregory an opportunity to complete the terms and conditions of probation and suspend any sort of uh, uh, jail sentence at this time. Uh, he's worked very, very hard to get his life on track. Uh, he currently is working full time at Mad Nice. It's a, a restaurant in Detroit as a chef. Uh, he since uh, does have a valid license. He now owns his own own car, his own home. He's he's really changed and turned his life around. Uh, additionally, Your Honor, he is able to uh, pay off all his costs and fines today. So I, I'd just be asking for an opportunity to uh, complete everything on probation and suspend a jail sentence at this time. Okay. So where I'm hearing a uh, child from. Yes, uh, somebody decided it would be a great idea to bring a uh, child to a courthouse this morning. Oh. I, I'm in Rochester Hills District Court. It's, it's okay. not my baby. Oh, no, no. <laughs> No, no worries. I just was confused because I everybody yeah. else is muted. So, okay. And so, where are you working, sir? Uh, down in Midtown. So, where have you been, sir, for three years, other than here at the 27th District Court or meeting with your probation officer? Uh, just keeping my head down, supporting my family, working hard, trying to stay out of trouble, stay clean. Well, sir, that, no, that wasn't how you're supposed to have completed probation. Staying out of trouble, yes. Staying clean, yes. But you were your terms and conditions that this court ordered, and you didn't comply. Right, with it. And you, in fact, you just blew us off. What was that? You just blew us off. You did nothing. You didn't do anything. You didn't go appear at probation, appear at workforce, attend anger management. You didn't do any of that, sir. You're right, Your Honor. And, and I so do now, apologize. And so now you just want a free pass. You didn't do anything on probation, and then. I shouldn't send it you to jail because now you're working and you have a job and you're providing for your family. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Well, I can appreciate, sir, that you have a job and you're providing for your family, but this court had orders that you had conditions and court orders that you did not that you did not comply with. Which, Your Honor, my, my client's extremely apologetic. He he was going through a very very rough time. Since then, he has uh, straightened, gotten himself on a straightened path, and uh, you know any, any disruption on that, he could lose his house, could lose his job. Uh, yeah, I, I would just simply ask for uh, one opportunity to prove this to this court that he is apologetic and that he can complete <clears throat> what remaining left on his probation. Well, here's the thing. Your client's had three years, three years of an opportunity. I, I understand, Judge, but he, he also did take it upon himself to walk himself in, get a court date just so he could come back and, and get this cleared up. I am not making any excuses, but I, I, I'm just asking for some leniency on his behalf. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to revoke probation. I'm going to revoke your under advisement status. I'm going to order 30 days jail. I'm going to suspend that jail, sir. We're going to do a jail review. We're going to do June 11th. And Judge, I, I would expect that uh, Mr. Gregory can complete his workforce and anger management by then and pay his costs and fines. He indicated to me he could take care of his costs and fines today. All right, you're to pay your fines and costs, sir. You are to attend anger management. And if you're to test today, sir, what's in your system? Uh, just marijuana, ma'am. Do you have a valid prescription for marijuana? No, Your Honor. All right, well, sir, you're not allowed to use any alcohol or drugs unless prescribed. That's That's been an order since you were on probation and on bond. So... You are to test randomly as well. So stop at probation and they will um, get you set up with your uh, testing, sir. Did you end up getting your GED, sir? No, ma'am. Why not? Uh, I suffered the loss of my father, just had a lot going on at home. Haven't really had much time to think about schooling. The court does express its condolence on the loss of your father. Mm -hmm. That's another condition, sir, that you do not comply with. So. You might want to make sure you're in full compliance because I will not hesitate to send you to jail, sir. I'm going to jail review if you're not. Anything else? Not at this time, Judge. No, you're not. Have a seat over in probation, sir. All right. And so we're on the record in the matter of the State of Michigan versus Daniel Bear in 2496. <clears throat> an appearance, counsel. Good morning, Your Honor. Michael Leonardo, P62114. I am the attorney for the defendant, Daniel Barron, who is president in court and standing to my right. All right, Mr. Barron, your name for the record, please. Yes, good morning. Um, Daniel Barron. 
All right, thank you. And today's the date scheduled for sentencing on your client's plea to an amended charge of operating or visibly impaired by alcohol and a possession of a gun under the influence. The um, other charge of dangerous weapon and operating while intoxicated were both dismissed. And um, counsel, do you have an opportunity to review the report and recommendation? Thank you, Your Honor. We have had an opportunity to review the true copy of the 27th District Court Substance Abuse Screening and Assessment. We went over that assessment together. We find it to be factually accurate um, in both, um, it, it reflects um, the situation. Um, I as well have submitted, but I don't know if the court had received it, but I can um, include it in my recitation and uh, elocution before sentencing, a sentencing memorandum of our own. Um, I think it mirrors much of what was uh, presented in the substance abuse screening and assessment. Um, I, I can go into that at this moment. I don't know if the court had an opportunity to see it. I sent it by mail on a Friday. Well, okay, counsel, mailing it on Friday, we clearly haven't received it yet. And then to bring in a 22 page document for me to review the morning of the sentencing when I have obviously a lot of other cases as well, I wouldn't have had an opportunity to review that. So I would like to have an opportunity to review that. I can, I, as I said, I think it mirrors what's in the, the report. I'll, I'll leave it to the court's discretion. I would just focus on, on and again, if the court wants me, I'm, I'm prepared to go forward with our allocution because we do think the recommendation is in line with the um, with the situation and, and what he's being presented in front of you for today. All right. Well, I just want you to know, counsel, that I haven't had an opportunity to review the sentencing memorandum. Um, <clears throat> as mailing it on Friday, it clearly hasn't been received by the court um, over the weekend. And, um, you know, I'm I'm remote today. Uh, and so I haven't had an opportunity to review that. Uh, very good. Um, I, I don't think, I think the defendant is, uh, would like to move forward. Is that the case? Yes. Uh, because he, he wants to put this incident behind him and go back to work and provide for his family. So I'm prepared, prepared in my elocution to to present the pertinent and okay. facts and circumstances and, and um, information I was relaying in that motion. Okay. Uh, not motion, I'm sorry. That's okay. All right, you may proceed. Okay. Okay, um, those are that the defendant is 39 years old as, as presented. He does have four children, 16, 13, and six and three years old. Uh, this is with his wife and spouse. They live as a, uh, uh, they've been married uh, and have been raising his children in a family unit. He's a homeowner in Taylor, Michigan, and he's the owner of Barrick. And that's how he provides um, for the family. His role is as the uh, breadwinner for the family. His wife is a stay-at-home mother and raises the children. And that's been very successful to, for them uh, to date. This, I think, is a blemish and an anomaly uh, within the larger context of his history and his family's history. Uh, since this incident, he's been forthright and cooperative. Um, and I think that will continue. The letters I submitted in support for Mr. Barron included letters from his spouse, from his child, his eldest, from coworkers, and from his employer at the Roof Company, a company that he subcontracts for. All of those letters have a common theme, that Daniel is a hardworking individual, that he's reliable, that he's honest, and that he's professional. And um, to quote the, his employer at the Roof Company, um, their motto is do the right thing, quote unquote, and he believes Daniel has proven to be the perfect fit for our company and represents that model. This incident aside, that is how he lives his life. And I think uh, the evidence and his history speak for that. There's other letters uh, that also include that Daniel is a very helpful, um, hardworking and kind person. And that's been my experience as well. He also provides for the community. Uh, in his line of work, he, he shovels snow as part of his livelihood. As part of that, since he has his his, toe, uh, his snow plow on his truck, he will plow the streets of his community for his neighbors. Uh, uh, and he does not charge for that. That is just something he does. Since this incident, he has also taken proactive steps. 
He has enrolled with a counseling service um, through the guidance center, and he's seeking independent uh, counseling as a result of these criminal charges, uh, which um, he's taking very seriously as he should. Uh, he's doing that once a week. Once a week. Once a week? Yes. Okay. Um, so, Your Honor, I, I do think he's prepared to move forward with sentencing. I would simply ask that in light of, of the load he is carrying, which is the father of four children, the sole uh, earner and provider for the family, this being his only criminal um, encounter with the court systems for a misdemeanor or a felony other than uh, minor traffic offenses, that the court take that in consideration in issuing a sentence um, more specifically, the workforce, I don't know how uh, much consideration the court will grant towards that or entertain, uh, but providing for four children, maintaining the mortgage on the home um, in the midst of all this, uh, his time is a very, we would ask that if the court could give any leniency as to that respect so he can focus on his employment, the raising of the children, and um, providing for the family. Having said that, I, I think that the, the recommendation is fair and accurate. Uh, we would just ask for any consideration as it relates to workforce. All right. And so, um, Mr. Beard, you left that night go with the intentions of going to a bar, correct? Where you coming from? Oh, I was coming from. Did you hear the judge's question? No, I'm sorry. Will you repeat that again, Honor, please? You left the bar that night. You left that night with the intentions of going to a bar, correct? That, that night, yes, my wife and I, yes, left, left okay. this bar. But okay. If I could, Your Honor, because I, I think there's a, my understanding was that they had gone to a restaurant or bar and ate dinner and had drinks and we were, were returning home. Yes. My point is this. My point is you knew you were going to dinner, likely having drinks, so why was your gun even in your possession at any point anyway? Why didn't you have it locked up somewhere securely in your home? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, our plans was just to uh, go for a walk and, and uh, have dinner, eat. And um, I, at that point, unfortunately, uh, my wife recommended to stop. No, I'm, I'm sorry, not to stop, but uh, I encouraged to have a drink. And and I, I know I should have said no. And... Or and, least, and I understand. Or, sir, at least put your gun in a spot that isn't anywhere within your reach. My gun wasn't on my reach. No. Was where, where, was the, where was oh, the gun? Oh, it was in my car, yes. Right, and I will note, Your Honor, since this incident, he, he no longer has possession of the firearm and he's relinquished it and he is uh, going to abide by the recommendation of probation. Um, and that would let, not be an issue. But you're your point is not lost on him. This could have been easily, a lot of it, this night could have been easily avoided. All right. The court's going to order the following. After hearing from counsel, hearing from Mr. Baring, reviewing the report and the recommendation, the court does find that there's reasonable grounds to part for MCL 769.5. The court's going to order <clears throat> um, 18 months probation. The court, as to both counts, the court's also going to note if you're eligible for early discharge as to both counts. You're also eligible under 771.1 status as to count three per the plea offer. And here are the following terms and conditions. You're not to violate any criminal law of any government. You're not to leave the state without the consent of the court. You are to report truthfully to your probation officer as often as your probation officer may require in person, writing, or virtually. You're to notify your probation officer immediately of any change in the address or employment status. You're not to use any alcohol or drugs unless prescribed to be subjected to random testing. The rehabilitative goal for this condition is to monitor progress in maintaining abstinence and sobriety. You're to participate in the chemical awareness program. The rehabilitative goal for that condition is to further educate you about drug and alcohol use so that you may make better informed decisions in the future, hopefully preventing this matter from happening again in the future. You are to attend the Mad Victim Impact Panel. The rehabilitative goal for that condition is to help you further increase your understanding of the dangers of driving while well under the influence and to educate you about the consequences of such behavior. The court's going to order you to participate in a gun class. You're not to have any weapons or firearms. The rehabilitative goal for both of those conditions is to ensure the safety of the community and hopefully prevent these matters from happening again in the future. I did hear your request regarding the court workforce. 
At this point, counsel, the court's going to order five days workforce as to each count, which is a total of 10 days. If your client's having trouble scheduling that, we can address that at some point in the future. The rehabilitative goal for that condition is to help you further develop life skills and give back to the community. All right. As to the operating of the impaired, I'm sorry, any questions regarding those conditions? Uh, just uh, as to the um, alcohol, it, did you say random testing? I didn't, I, after no alcohol and it's. Yes, random testing. All right. As to the fines and costs, as to the operator visibly impaired, $200 fine, $100 screening assessment fee, $900 supervision oversight fee. That's $50 a month at 18 months. Since your client's eligible for early discharge, some of that money may not be due. $300 for the cost of prosecution. Crime victim assessment fee of $75. Justice system assessment fee of $50, $200 for the workforce, it's five days of $40 a day. In chemical awareness program, $75. For total of 2100 dollars $2, I believe. Let me just double check. Oh, $2,000. Right, $2,000 total. Then on the possession of the under the influence, $100 fine for $200 cost of prosecution. Crime victim assessment fee of $75. Justice system assessment fee of $50. $200 for the court workforce, that's $40 per day at five days, $1,625 for a total between both matters of $2,625. Your client did post a $1,000. Any other money for your client to pay today? Yes, $1,175. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so you can uh, pay that at the window, sir. And then the court's going to also say that they did that you're eligible for early discharge as long as all the following have occurred. You've completed at least half of your original term of probation. Probation <laughs> conditions have been completed. You've had at least three months without any violations. No money's been either paid in full. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you. you. Good luck to you, sir. Have a good day. Natasha Azar, 232004. And <clears throat> appearance, counsel. Your Honor, this is Marshall Garmo, appearing on behalf of defendant Natasha Azar. And I did see her in jail a couple of days ago. I spoke to her for uh, for a really long time. May I, Your Honor, say a few things about uh, that? Well, just one moment. Just one moment, Miss Azar. Your name for the record, please. Natasha Azar. Okay. And so, Miss Azar was sentenced to the 25th District Court and Sobriety Court. She was to be released on tether, and then, um, and I remember this quite specifically because we were very when you could leave and not having <clears throat> visitors at the home and this was for um, your possession of drug paraphernalia was dismissed your lord where drugs were kept used or sold is what you had pled guilty on and so um, this shows that you um, attempted to remove the device on November 11th, 2023, the device was then located at the, on the sidewalk along Moran. You have then since absconded from both the Tether and the 25th District Court Sobriety Treatment Court. And so somehow you ended up in custody. And so now you're here today. <clears throat> and counsel, just so you know, I do have Miss Shine. Um, is also present. And so, um, counsel, what is it that you would like the court to know? Your Honor, I just uh, got retained by Natasha's parents. They came to my office very, very concerned about their daughter. And actually, I did visit her in jail. We, we spoke at some length, and uh, she has a lot of dreams, Your Honor, a lot of uh, aspiration. She wants to go to college. She wants to get a good job. She wants to make her parents proud of her. And my goal is to get see if we can uh, somehow remove these convictions on the record. I, I do believe, Your Honor, that she really means it this time. She just uh, she, she she does not want to be where she is uh, in the Wayne County Jail. I'm asking. I'm respectfully asking the, this honorable court to give her a, a chance, Your Honor, to forgive her for um, for that uh, the other thing. But if you can release uh, release her, Your Honor, and uh, she will prove herself to the to this honorable court. 
the, the parents are very, very concerned about it. They keep calling me. Well, here's the thing. Ms. Azar, okay. she had been given an opportunity for treatment court. And how is it that you're in custody? How, how did you end up in custody, ma'am? I was with a friend and they were caught stealing retail fraud and they didn't check the receipt, but I had I paid for everything that I had on. No, no ma'am, I'm not really concerned with whether or not you're charged with that or not. So you had police contact, and so that's how you were brought back into court, into jail. Mm. But it wasn't for me, yeah. I'm not asking who it was for. My point is you didn't walk yourself into you didn't walk yourself into court. You didn't walk yourself into the jail. You will continue to be on the run. My probation officer was friends on Facebook with an ex that hit me with a bat when I was 17. So I was kind of scared to go back to the court. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What? My probation officer, the one that was in charge of my case, is friends with uh, my ex-boyfriend on Facebook who had hit me with a bat when I was 17. She had okay. even made some posts about me, so I was kind of scared to go back into the courts. Hold on. Who made a post about you? Three or four years ago, somebody made, made a post saying I broke into their house, which is proof that I did not. And she had shared that post about me, my probation officer. Your probation officer at the 27th District Court or the 25th District Court? Um, the drug court one, Lincoln Park. Okay. And so did you bring that to anybody's attention, ma'am? No, I was too nervous because she was in charge of my case. I felt like I didn't really have any say or pull. Okay. And so... <clears throat> Okay. And so it scared me. I had cut off my tether of three days before I was supposed to be done with it to show that I wasn't that it wasn't that I couldn't do the drug court. I could. I just was too scared to do it under my probation officers. So, ma'am, at any point, did you indicate that at all? Did you say to her, do you know who I am? Does she know who you are? I mean, how, how, how do you know she knows who you are? She the post shows a picture of me and my ex boyfriend. Okay, ma'am. My my point is this: if that was three or four years ago, perhaps she wasn't aware that that was you that was in the post. So unless it's brought to her attention, she may not even know the relation between you and the ex boyfriend and how she's. Who knows how she's even friends with the ex boyfriend on Facebook? I don't know. But my point is, if there's not, if it's not brought up to anybody. How was anybody supposed to address it? So instead, you cut off your tether. You didn't even contact the 27th District Court. I had broken my phone the same day. So your phone's been broken since so but since, but since then, I have gotten a job and I've put in college applications. Ma'am, ma'am, are you telling this court that your phone's been broken since November? Yeah, with that phone number, yeah, I haven't been able to get any of my contacts or my email back. Okay, and you're familiar with Google, right? You use that on a regular basis? Yeah, but it was two-step verification to that phone number. Okay, ma'am, my point is this. The 27 District Court contact information is online. You can find us anywhere online. You can walk on in. You can do any of that. You did nothing. You did nothing for that. And so, Mr. Garmo, you wanted Ms. Shine to log in. What was, what's, what was that for, sir, counsel? Sorry, Your Honor, I just want to be clear. Uh, is it the mom, uh, Natasha's mother? No. I, thought she, I, I already saw her. Counsel, counsel, Ms. Apgar is on Zoom. I'm not asking about that. You wanted the probation officer from the 27th District Court to be on Zoom, so she is. Your Honor, well, I just want uh, Natasha to be released so I can help her with the other with the other charges in three uh, district courts, 25th, 27, and 28. What's going uh, on in the 28th district court? Yeah, she has she had a total of five misdemeanors, Your Honor, in three district courts. And then my job is to, to see what we can do about these charges and so she can start all over again with the schooling, college, and, uh, and a good job. Okay, so, counsel, are we holding a violation hearing on the tether? Or are we? What is it we're doing? Actually, Your Honor, actually, I'm just asking her if you would release her, uh, and and then at, th at that point, if she with any violation whatsoever, she will be uh, she'll she'll be back to jail. And I know I'm certain she will not she will not give the court any reason to be uh, 
to be jailed again. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to um, you have to resentence your client because at this point your client's not going to be participating, <clears throat> not going to be allowed to participate in the 25th District Court. So we're going to have to resentence your client. And we have to do another PSI because I don't know what's been going on in the time that she's been absconded from this court. So let's set this for May 20th at 10 a.m. The court's not releasing your client on her own recognizance. I can tell you that right now. So your client is not going to be eligible to uh, be released on a tether since she's already cut off one. And so um, your client's going to have your client remain in the Wayne County Jail until her her resentencing. So the court's going to order no bond. Your, your Honor, any possibility of cash bond? I'm sorry? Uh, how about cash bond? Counsel, your client cut off her tether. She's been absconded for the last five months. She hasn't contacted the court. She previously had a bond posted. The bond had been revoked for violating her conditions because she was to be tethered to inpatient treatment through the Wayne County Jail even. And so your client also... Sorry. Your client had previously violated bond conditions. And so, no, the court's going to order no bond. Can I get a tether, but not like just a GPS tether, not a house arrest tether? Because my problem was I couldn't get to work and I couldn't do anything besides stay at my house. I you didn't communicate anything. You just cut off the tether that's not even yours. You cut off the tether. You didn't contact anybody after that. So, no, no bond. We'll see you back on May 20th. So I'm going to have to have you um, I'm going to have to set up a phone interview for your PSI. In the meantime, you've accrued additional charges. So absolutely not. No bond for all of those reasons. And a phone interview for PSI. And we're going to set that for, um, we'll do April 19th. At eight forty-five, will that work, Wayne County Jail? Well, my original charge it was a loitering where drugs are kept, anyways. So shouldn't I have already had time served for that? Ma'am, you wanted to participate in the twenty-fifth district court treatment court, which you desperately need. Instead of doing that, you cut off your tether and you absconded. You've been on the run for well, five months. Now, yeah, you my original charge, me. I should have already had time served for, is what I'm saying. Ma'am, you haven't had any time served. You haven't served any time. So I how did was 32 time served? days. I did 32 days originally, and then I got released off a of tether. Loitering where drugs are, that's a maximum of 30 days. I show August 29th, we revoked your bond, and then September 11th, you were sentenced. That is not 31 days. At best, at best, at 13 days. So shouldn't I only have 15 more days? With my original charge, there's only a 30-day max that I could serve. Ma'am, you have agreed to voluntarily participate in the 25th District Court Treatment Court. Yeah, but I had no idea that I was going to be with somebody who had previously known me. Okay, and again, you didn't communicate anything. Oh. Communication. So what I'm saying, ma'am, is the court's going to re-sentence you on May 20th. I cannot sentence you without having updated information, especially since you've had additional police contact. So actually, counsel, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to... I have a job now. I'm putting college applications. Like, I'm trying to be better in my life. I'm going to adjourn the, uh, I'm going to set the sentencing to be May 6th instead of May 20th because your client's still in custody. May 6th. Uh... At 10 a.m. <clears throat> and Wayne County Jail is May, does April 19th work for a phone interview? Do you, is there a deputy there, ma'am? Yeah, she asked me if there was a deputy. Yes. 
Hi, we got Mrs. you. Central, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Good. Thank you. Um, is it uh does Friday morning at um eight forty five work for a phone PSI for Miss Azar? Friday morning PSI. Yes. Uh, we can we can call in on the phone. Yes. Okay. All righty. You guys know you send the paperwork over to the coordinator. Yes. And, and he'll make it happen for you. Yes. Okay. Very good. Thank you. You're your one. All right. Anything else, Council? Well, thank you, Honor. All right. Thank you. All right. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Are you kidding me? Don't oh my up. God. You have got to be kidding me. What? what is going on today? This is, this is a joke. This is a joke. Jake is an absolute joke. He needs an interpreter. I need an interpreter when I cannot express myself. Oh my God. Search. Put that cigarette out. I don't give a crap that you are outside of her. This, what is wrong with everybody today? You know what? Let's read it. Let's read it. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Man. Man. Can you hear it? Okay. 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 Okay